Hope. Yes. You've been playing Control lately. Oh, yes. <laughs> You're excited to talk about Control? I'm so excited. <laughs> I need to hear more. I seriously am already hyped. I'm so it. glad to hear you say that yeah. because everyone else is like, please stop. Stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> Just stop. Um, so, Control is by Remedy. It is a, essentially, it's a third person shooter. Cool. So, you. I've a lot of practice doing those. Yeah, so I mean. It's Alan Wake and what was the last one they did? Quantum Break? Quantum Break. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Does that have some practice? But this is by far the best. Like, it ah, is cool. leagues ahead. Wow. Um, in my opinion. Oh, okay. So, it starts out and you essentially find uh, what they call the service weapon, which is your gun. And it all starts out very ominously. You're in what they call the uh, the oldest building. The oldest house? It's One an, of those it's things. It's an old building. But it's magical. Cool. It's magical. So you go in there and it's, it looks like an, an old sort of office building. It, it looks very government, very, very clean, very clerical. And you walk through and things aren't right. And you meet this dodgy janitor called Artie. And he just gives you vague go for the job interview. And you're like, what? I'm looking for someone. What? And then you, you go into the manager's room for the job interview. And what you find there is a man who's blown his brains out. Oh, <laughs> mad. Oh, good. Oh, good. And good start. the service weapon, so this gun laying on the floor. When you pick it up, it chooses you as the new manager. Oh, gosh. And oh, right. the bullet that ran through his brain is still connected to the gun. And through that bullet, it picked up his final memories, and that helps guide you as you play the game. <gasps> yes! So Great conceptually, control so is incredibly interesting. Mm -hmm. It's got very, like, SCP vibes, very alternate universe, very objects of power. Yeah, it, Great. it seems that. So. Um, but what it does is, even though it's kind of a horror sort of setting where things aren't right, and it's quite disturbing... Just uneasy, by the same. It, yeah. it is very uneasy. It's definitely got that sen sensation of everything's wrong, and you don't really understand what's happening. Yeah. And what you you'll go into new areas and you'll see that the architecture itself has been split and it's um, maybe there are like Escher style stairs up the walls and things like that. And you purify those areas and turn them more into what they should be, but it still doesn't feel right. And something I really enjoy about it is the concept of objects of power. Right. So the, one of the first ones you get gives you your abilities, which is what makes control so fun. So the gunplay is okay, and you can modify your gun to be different kinds of guns, which is interesting in itself, but where it's actually fun is that you get abilities. Okay. So the first one that you get is called Launch, and it's essentially like a telekinesis where you lift things up and throw them at people. Okay, like cool. Star Wars. Yeah, you, you have the Force. Okay, amazing. But the way you get the Force is you find this corrupted item, which is a floppy disk, and it's from back when people feared nuclear war intensely. Mm. This floppy disk had the launch codes for Russian missiles. So the collective fear of humans of the ability to launch has given this floppy disk <gasps> the power no, to launch. launch. Okay, okay. Right. So it's all about infusing items with belief and allowing different dimensions through and things right. like that. Can I ask what kind of enemies are we fighting in this game? So what you're fighting is a an unpleasant resonance. So it's kind of like this sound that's distorted and it may not be from our dimension. It's called the hiss. And what that relates to in a, in a gameplay term is it takes over the people that are in the office buildings, right, essentially. Okay. So most of the enemies are humans that look fairly normal. You get a couple that are really distorted, though. So, like, some of the enemies might fly. Uh, Got, like, full prototype on you, I guess? Kind of. Yeah. Like, and they look alien. Like, there are regular human-looking ones, mm. but there are ones where their guts are out and things like nice. that. And you don't necessarily notice it until you get really you're close like, to them. And what, you see it and you're like, oh, yikes. Yeah, yeah. It, it has that awkwardness to it because you don't expect it. Some of the other enemies are just like a distorted ball or like a glitch. So it's there isn't much enemy, enemy variation. Like once you've seen them all, you've kind of seen them all. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's an area where uh, a totally different problem has taken over the lower part and it's just mold, but it's like interdimensional mold. As much as like it, obviously the environments seem really, really interesting to try and explore. Does the lack of variety in enemies get exhausting at a certain point? I think that it could... I don't know if I'd call it exhausting, because I yeah. still enjoyed playing, and okay. I still enjoyed going through the new areas and discovering new things. Mm. But it, it is something where you kind of think, I've definitely done this a million times. I see. So, yeah, you just kind of get into the rhythm of it, and you're like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Do you think there's anything strong behind a female protagonist in this game? Does it have any significance as to why they would have chosen this particular type of character? I'm not too sure. So she's um, looking for her brother. Okay. And in part of it, uh, when... Uh, 
it's brought up that your brother and yourself both have names that are unisex. Mm. And it never explores that properly, but it implies that at least someone out there had the idea that maybe you're the same person. I see. Uh, okay. Or maybe you're interchangeable. Oh, hey. So it, it, it doesn't, I don't think it ever confirms or denies it. But it just kind it, of like it, awkwardly sinister. It just kind of yeah. has that notion yeah. of, it, it, it provides you with uncertainty constantly. Something that is kind of cool is there are a lot of women in the game. And right. a lot of the heads of department, like there's a good mix of uh, men and women, and they all look like normal people, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Um, but a lot of them Relatable. are, uh, uh, a lot of it's uh, taken from live footage as well, so they'll have like footage of the actual actors and oh, things like that. Oh, okay. That so there's a mix of like me. live action and like uh, motion capture? Yeah. Okay, cool. And, and that's part of why they look like real people, because mm -hmm. a lot of them happen to be real people. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, it, it adds an element, and it kind of works into that idea that things aren't quite right, because you go between computer graphics and then real people I and see. things like that. How long did it in general take you to complete the campaign? I think it's a relatively short-ish campaign. Like I think Great. you can get it done in about 10 hours. Uh, it does have side missions that you can go off and do and there has been confirmed DLC which looks like it's going to riff off Alan Wake. Nice. But as far as like what you've seen so far, uh, overall thoughts, is it well rounded? Is it like it? It probably would feel like it, from what I've seen, it looks pretty polished. It's yeah. Uh, you haven't really mentioned many shortcomings. Is it? Yeah, yeah. exactly. It, it's like all round. I, it's a wrap up. I mean, I do, I do genuinely love it. Okay, cool. Um, so that means that I'm going to jump to the good. Cool. But it does have a couple things which are being patched. So it, uh, I was playing on a PlayStation 4 Pro, and if I uh, entered a menu and it's out of it, it would stutter for a good like. 10 seconds cool. before everything yeah, goes so to normal. So it's mostly technical stuff. Yeah, yeah maps okay, wouldn't load cool. properly, things like that. But I think the one thing I will say is it's got some odd difficulty spikes right. where things just suddenly get super hard. Like bullet soaking? Kind of. It's, it's got this thing where if you do start taking damage, you go down fast. Right. So as long as you can maintain a sort of... You get health from enemies and things like that as well. So as long as you're maintaining that, things are very easy. Mm. But the second you lose access to that or you just take too much damage very quickly, you die. I didn't play it for a week and a half and jumped back in, and I can't do anything anymore. Right. Yeah. I know what you mean. You now I'm up to the... terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I actually experienced that a lot as well. I know what you're saying. Mm, yeah. but like with um, like Dead Cells, you played that for a little bit and then left it, came back to yeah. it, and it was rebalanced. Do you think that rebalancing would really kind of finesse a lot of the frustrations you have? I feel like it, it definitely could because I I really want to know more about the story. So the other thing it doesn't do very well is checkpointing, okay. which I didn't notice too much until I started sucking. Because when go. you're surviving, you don't notice. Yeah, true. And then suddenly when you're losing to the same boss and it takes you like <laughs> five to ten minutes to get back to that boss. It's frustrating. That's really frustrating. Okay. Nice. Interesting. So oh. I don't... I don't know if it needs to be easier, but if the checkpointing was better, it would go a long way to helping that. But if you're into third-person games, if you're interested by the sort of sound of this world, worth checking out? Oh, 100%. Awesome.